Hello, and welcome to another edition of Engagement Now, where it's our goal to actively engage parents, educators, students, and stakeholders in the learning process to ensure the success of every child. Today, we're going to discuss social media from a variety of perspectives. Question, as a parent, educator, or community member, do you know the latest social media platforms? Do you use Facebook, Twitter, Ning, or Snapshot, or Kick? Chances are your children do. If you're not familiar with social media, it's high time you learn because parents should be up to date on the latest social media platforms, even if you don't use them. When you understand your child's digital environment, you can educate them on the proper uses of social media so that they fully understand the consequences of their actions. Join us as we discuss this important topic. You can also join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter at EngageMeDCSD. For more information on this and any other topic, visit our website at www.decab.k12.ga.us. Hello, and welcome to another segment of Engagement Now. My name is Tracy Knight. And I'm Moore Cease Beasley. And today's topic is all about parents and their use of social media. Joining us today to my immediate right is Ladija White, followed by Bridget Johnson and Terry Barlow. Thank you for, ha thank you for joining us today. We love, we love having you on the show. And to my left, we have Jeff Dickerson, maybe a familiar face to all. He's a communication consultant here with the district. And we have Portia Kirkland, who is responsible for all of our social media and communication here in the school district. Well, let's have a great show, Tracy. All right. A great conversation. Boy, we want to talk about parents and their use of social media. This is one of those tools that is just absolutely here to stay. How does social media really differ from traditional media? This is something that's just sort of cropped up on us. Well, let's say that media is an automobile and traditional media is driving it back and forth in your driveway. And social media is actually going out and using streets and highways okay. and going uh, interstate Great or analogy. around the country. <laughs> that, would be, that would probably be the difference between traditional media and social media. You know, a news used to come only from news sources. And I've been in the news business for about 35 years. And, um, and now it comes from every source. So it, Jeff, and it comes right into where you happen to be. If you're in a coffee shop, yes. if you're in your car, if you're sitting at home on your couch, all of that news that used to be collected by news editors comes directly to you or to your child. So Jeff, based on your analogy, is it fair to say that people are getting probably more information from social media than they are traditional forms of media? Oh my God, not only that, but traditional forms of media are using social media to get their messages wow. out. That's what I was wow. gonna ask, wow. wow. So, so the news industry is actually using social media to inform their work. The, the news media has been revolutionized wow. by social media and it's just not, what it used to be. The New York Times has more readers online. BBC has more readers and viewers online uh, than they do in any print edition at wow. all. You check, your, check your neighbor's um, uh, driveways and see how many uh, newspapers you're exactly. getting, are getting to, and they're not because folks are just, you know, going well, to, going to nyt.com wow. or cnn.com. Well, Portia, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> as the district's communication person responsible for social media, are we getting the traffic with our parents here in DeKalb? Well, we're, we're trying. You know, we have a billion, over a billion users of social media online today, right? But looking at our numbers for Facebook, right, for the district Facebook, we have 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. For Twitter, we have 8,000, Instagram, 200. 
okay? And the district mobile app, just a little over 13,000. Now we have 100,000 students in our exactly. district, so I know we have way more parents than what I hear you're saying yes. with those numbers. That's right. So we've so got we some opportunities here, huh? That's right. What, what do, do you think better. is causing the numbers to rise up slowly, or do you see the numbers rising? or what, well, What's causing the parents to be apprehensive about joining this, the various social media that we have? I think change. I think when it comes to education and social media, there's been that fear back factor, a little bit of pushback, because when we think of social media, we're thinking personal pages, right? Personal engagement. We're not thinking that uh, maybe a staff member or a teacher wants to communicate with a uh, student on Facebook. So I think change. I think that we have to now adjust and embrace it instead of run from it. You know, I, I have to agree and I have to admit, I as a Gen Xer, I've been a little slower to adopt it. I think, um, you know, sometimes feeling like, oh, do I want all of my business out there? But the truth is, as Jeff has said, people are using this to stay informed. So how is the district using this to maybe keep parents informed? Or how do you want to use this to help keep parents informed in real time and to get their feedback? Well, what we do is as soon as we have a news release, and Jeff knows this, as soon as he writes the news release, I get it. I post it to the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, the website. So we're pushing out the information. Uh, we also make sure that all of our key stakeholders know that when you go to the website, just by having our social icons right there, it's clickable to the Twitter so that you can comment. It's clickable to our Facebook, uh, Facebook so that we can engage and share and post. Um, and we're also conducting workshops, just making sure that our parents are in the know, that they know how to use Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. In fact, we have a Get Connected uh, digital package, you know, on the website that says how to use Twitter, how to use Facebook. And we also make sure that it's translated for our awesome. diverse population. Well, let's, let's talk to our parents. Let's see how many of you are using so, uh, social media, are you connected to what DeKalb is posting on social media? I have to be honest, no, I am not. Um, I do have a personal Facebook account, but this is my first time hearing anything about DeKalb posting something on Facebook, Instagram, and honestly, I don't know how to use Instagram. How do you get your news currently from, from DeKalb County School System? How are you sort of staying connected right um, now? I go on DeKalb website and I look at the calendar and um, just check the upcoming events, um, but I don't, and then I have uh, the parent portal, so I get my daughter grades from there, but I actually, I don't ever go on Instagram or Facebook for the Do camera. you have any apprehensions about using social media as a parent? Yes, okay. because like you guys were saying, personally, I do feel that a lot of things that, once you put it out there, you can't, you know, you okay. can't take it down, so I'm kind of very, I'm a personal person, so I'm a little afraid if I put something out there, let's just say if I'm a little upset that day. Okay. If I say something the wrong way or it could be taken the wrong way, and you know, once it's out there, you can't really delete it. Okay. You know, I have, um, likewise, I'm just learning that there, that it's that much penetration um, by the district, but I'll be honest, it doesn't encourage me to, to engage through, here's why. I am very active personally with Facebook, mostly Facebook, and I have accounts with most of the others. But I don't see um, social media, that word social media and the business of parenting my child through a school, school, school district as an avenue. I prefer emails, I'll occasionally welcome a robocall, I will go to the website, but to me it's a bit too, um, Personal. I don't. I think I would. I don't have the orientation that the way you would use it is business enough for me. And if I were to participate, if I were to go and look for information through any of the outlets, mm -hmm. it would definitely be one way. For the reason of it's once I create push send on something, I, it's it is out there and it does create a sort of um, involve me in a way that I want to hold a bit more hold back a bit more. Yeah. Now you can email me all day, yeah. but I, well, I have a hard time. See, and I think the issue with that is when we have all of these great things going on in the district, whether it's BAN, whether it's the Bridge television show, 
we're not sharing any of this good news because of you know the viewpoint being well it's personal where there's so much going on in a hundred and a hundred and thirty seven schools that's great and we're not sharing that information and Portia so, you make a valid point we do have so many things going on in DeKalb but if our parents are not getting the the feeds if you yes. will yeah. about the events that are occurring the successes that we're having absent being informed you yes. basically come to your own conclusions right yeah. yes. yes and so but i That's understand because right. i can tell you that i'm a bit apprehensive about using some i have a facebook account personal mm -hmm. but i'm apprehensive apprehensive exactly. about posting because I know once it's out there and then being being an educator and everything you do is under being scrutinized sure, by individuals sure. there's that Dr. Beasley saying something <laughs> he shouldn't say so I just said let me just stay back yeah, yeah, yeah. so I understand that apprehension yeah. totally yeah but the I issue is is that the conversation still happening yeah so yes. you know at your daughter's school as you know you've had this great Christmas concert someone else might be on there bashing. Wow. And it would be great to have a parent say, oh, it was such a great event, and they yeah. sang That's this song, point. and they That's said a very this good and that. Point. The conversation's still happening whether you're there or not. And it's not exactly. going anywhere, is it? Mm -mm. It's I'm, not going it's anywhere. It's not going anywhere. And yeah. that's the thing, you know, with email, I. I I think, I don't know, that eventually this may even replace email as a form of communication yeah. or it may even evolve. So I definitely understand I'm kind of where you are, yeah. but mm -hmm. I think I'm coming to the realization that it's evolving. And I do believe mm -hmm. that. I do believe I better catch up because it's, email is going to be a dinosaur <laughs> before I, I, when I, I look think, up. When I think about social media as it, as it has evolved, there has been so much negativity surrounding it oh, okay. that it makes you apprehensive. Okay. Uh, it makes you, because there are some of us who hold ourselves dear and those things around us dear and we use it in a proper way. But there are so many others who use it and there's so much other stuff on there that's not healthy for our kids or healthy for us as parents that we have a tendency to say, hey, mm, not yet. Yeah. You know, yeah. one of the things I keep hearing is that there, there's a sort of a fear or a concern about how social media might impact them on the back end. Um, once they put something out there, they can't take it back. In some of the training that you all are doing or maybe going forward, is there a way to maybe address that and to sort of put at bay some of the fears or concerns? Yeah, I think that the more knowledgeable you are about a social media platform, the better position that you're in. There are procedures, there are guidelines, there's policy to protect you, okay? And there are privacy settings. So I'm not saying that the concern shouldn't be there. Um, we were concerned 20 years ago when we were on the playground and just, you know, swinging on a, a swing. Today you have a digital playground, okay? Didn't mean that your parent said Didn't, don't go outside, okay? So the kids are there. We have the safeguards in place, and we just have to make sure that we're all educated and knowledgeable enough so that, you know, we're ahead. Well, I'll throw this out there. You mentioned the kids are there, and we've got parents here. We've got consultant educators, et cetera. What is the responsibility of a parent relative to not just monitoring the students, but knowing the various platforms that they are really using and what messages they are tweeting or they are uh, Snapchatting uh, or whatever they're doing. <laughs> whatever they're doing. What, what's the responsibility <laughs> of the parent to be informed and to maybe participate in some of that, um, that exchange? I think we're all responsible. You know, as a parent, I made the decision that my daughter was not allowed to be on social media until she was on social media in school and it was used for instruction. Okay, that's when I said, ah, oh, I better open up the door a little bit. Now I have admissions directors looking at profile pages. Okay. Let me get her ready, okay? Um, but I think that that's really up to the parent and it's also up to the teacher and it's also up to the administrator. I think we're all responsible to protect our students. But as far as the parent, I think that's up to your own discretion. Well, we parents, and then I'm gonna pitch, pitch back over to Jeff. Is there a particular uh, age where you feel comfortable with your child accessing these various no. types of media? <laughs> <laughs> no, my daughter is um, in middle school and she's definitely, she's on kick and she wants to be on Instagram and Facebook and I don't want her to have any experience with any of it because I feel like kids just post things and they're not really responsible enough to know what they're posting and they're just doing it for the fun of it or just at the moment because 
and they're just like, they're just in the moment because they live by the moment. And then it's just like, you can't take that back. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words. And so that's what really scares me as a parent. And I mean, I know she's 13 and I want to let her get out there and join um, like everyone else is. And that's always the conversation in the house is, well, everyone else is doing it. And I understand that. But because I'm not doing it, I'm not really monitoring her doing it. So I feel like the only way I'm going to let her do it, maybe I need to join. Okay. <laughs> right. Great point. I think the other thing is that it, with exposure, uh, kids are going to be exposed and we have to be a part of that exposure and that the more knowledgeable we are as it relates to those particular social networks, uh, the better we are with guiding our kids through that process. I think that my child in particular, I just, you know, she's never made less than an A in school and, you know, I want to give her that level of freedom, but then her intellect is not where it needs to be as it relates to that freedom. And so I have to draw back, you know, I, I just have to keep the reins tight because my ultimate goal is to see her be successful. And there are too many things for her to stumble on and social media can be one of those tools. And so it, I'm mindful of that. And, we, and as, as I hear you say that, it makes me, I think we, we're, we're at, we have a dilemma because children need to learn, and oftentimes they learn by mistakes. By mistakes. Yeah. But then yes. at the same time, there are some mistakes that can be very They're consequential. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And so you as can't a take parent, them right, you have to figure it out. You know, what do you do? Yeah, well, I see managing social media as an extension of my parenting, the same discipline that I give to when do we date? When are we able to um, you know, take on any increased responsibility? Social media fits right in there as well. Now, I will say that my daughter actually went underground. I discovered that, okay. you know. <laughs> Und yeah. Underground. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, how I dealt with it is I, you know, I became her, by the way, she was of age, but we hadn't had the discussion yet. And, and because her friends were out there, she wanted to just be a part of that environment. Now I'm chasing her all around social media. She gets on something, I'm right, hey, Hannah. Well, can I say her name? Hey, Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> and she, yeah. you know, then she plops to the next, goes to the next one. So, um, I, you know, it can be safe. It can be inviting. It could be a great way to um, allow them to mature. It just has to be inter interrelated. You have to be a part. It has to be seen as something that happens together. She cannot, they cannot believe that they are independent and they can just manage that on the, by themselves. There's too yes. many consequences. That's a good point. Sure. Have the conversation. Mm -hmm. I, I probably talk to my daughter about social media every week. Have your passwords changed? I have a list of all of her passwords. If she changes them, I come back, you know, a week later. Have you changed your passwords? Who are you talking to? Are you really using your real name or, uh, you know, who's your profile? Um, sometimes you'll see kids just have a flower up there and that's not really who they are. And then you have to be concerned. You want them to, to use uh, a profile pic that's actually them. Okay, make sure that their identity is well, really well, I, who they are. I think those are great points and I'd like to pitch to Jeff. Jeff, in light of the news and politics, I all, I think young people need to be informed. Would you all agree with that? I do. How can we as parents and educators allow young people to use social media or at least teach them how to use social media to stay informed about what's going to impact their lives in such fundamental ways exactly. and that's politics. Well, you know, I think that a lot of what we're talking about is young people using social media and the internet um, and online access for entertainment purposes and for socializing. Um, and they spend an inordinate amount of time doing that when what they have in their hand is the world's greatest learning tool, wow. right? Because in it contains the answer to that algebra problem. It's mm. true, right? Absolutely. Or an A Absolutely. on that next test. That's right. And we really have to begin to, to I, I think, shift how we think about this new technology. Our kids have all of the answers immediately at their disposal. Let me tell you an example of that. I remember my children were taking an AP course. Teacher gave them some AP problems. They copied and pasted the problem in Google and got the answer. I said, well, you're not really learning. But they said, well, Dad, right now, I just need the answer. The point is, 
you're right, the answers are there, but you still have to share with, teach them as to how to effectively use the resource. And, but, but also there is the process. So they have the answer and they know where to get, get the it, answer. Right. And the next thing is, okay, I also know how to develop that technique. Yes. I know how to yes. go. And, and so fine. when you begin to use it in a very, very fundamentally different way, and I think it's an opportunity for parents. I'm a parent, I have five kids, but I'm an older parent. And so I didn't have that growing, okay. grow, grow, uh, you know, as my kids matured, but today's parents have this wonderful opportunity, I think, to sit down with their students and to learn with them and to use this technology, not so much for entertainment um, and, and, and maybe not so much for the daily news, mm -hmm. but how do you learn? And there's this wealth of information out there and I think the kids are hungry for it. But you know, Jeff, you're making a, a very valid point because what I heard you say is that in some ways they're learning critical thinking skills because they're finding ways to self, -te they're teaching themselves and they're learning how to navigate on their own. Now teachers are starting to incorporate this into the classroom, so there's there's a much more robust way of doing this. But I do hear you saying that there are some opportunities for them to learn how to problem solve on their own. And I, I think we can all applaud that. How do we know, there's so many platforms and they're changing so quickly. How do we know which ones to get on? Uh, you know, how do we how do we keep up? Um, you, you've got to have a very young person around you. <laughs> yeah, and ask them, and ask them the questions. I mean, that's how I found out about Snapchat. It wasn't because I, I Googled it. I asked my daughter, well, what are you doing on your phone? Oh, I'm on this new app. It's, it's Snapchat. And I said, okay, well, how does it work? Ask them. They'll teach you. Yes. May, I, may I bring up something that's, yes, uh, that absolutely. I've been sort of considering, th thinking about as we dialogue today, and that is the, the pressure that social media has placed in my household on keeping up. Social media has become this barometer of, and I remember one time we were on this fabulous vacation and my daughter was on Instagram and then she looked up and she goes, we're in Hawaii. And she goes, why aren't we in Paris? Uh. <laughs> and you know what, she was looking at someone else who looked like they were having a, a minutia more fun, you know, and this, so I, I say all of that to say, as parents, we've got to um, help balance their expectations yeah. and, and, and of how social media shapes their ideology, their personalities, and, and so forth. Yep. And their vision for life. Exactly. And I think that as parents, we have to be open to learning again because we have reached that place where we know what we know. I have my career, I'm making a home, so I'm good. You need to learn but I have to sit at the computer with my daughter. I have to be on YouTube and Google as she does our process. Because one of the things in school, uh, as it relates to uh, the Common Core curriculum, is her being able to write it out, not just solve the problem. Yes. Tell me how you solved it. Yes. You know, I only know that because I've been sitting with her as a part of the process. And then homework, the teacher says, she needs to be able to tell me how she did it. She can't just put it on the paper and show me how she, she has to tell me, verbalize it. Because if she can verbalize it, she's learned it. Because it's too easy to sit in front of a computer and Google it and it get is. that answer. That's it right. is very yeah, that's easy. Right. So it that's sounds right. like this is also an opportunity for intergenerational relationships where parents can be taught by their children. Oh, yes. 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 True that. Yes. 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 And, and can learn together. <laughs> and yes. can learn together. Yes. together. This is not a top down yep. method anymore, yep. is well, it? But yep. Let me just throw this one factor in there. I'm, 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 I'm a tour parent. So I understand the need to be involved to this degree. And that's not the case with every child in the, inside the system. You're, you're looking at children who are, who are parents who are just as young as the children and their level of maturity is not where it needs to be as it relates to the educational process. I've sat out front, in front of the school and see a guy sitting in the car with his child and he's engaging in his activity while his child is in the back seat. And I'm like, wow, child gets out of this car and comes into the school and... Well, and that, that, I think that's a great point and that really speaks to as, as adults, mature adults, we should have discipline relative to all of the activities we have in our lives and there's a time and a place and we should not allow any particular activity to supersede those moments with our children yes. where we should be interfacing and interacting with them as an adult or mom, dad, with a child or 
father, son, mother, son, you know, mother, daughter, father, daughter. That's most important. Now you all, we've had a great conversation and this conversation is winding down. <laughs> But I want you to think about our parents out there because we want our parents to be engaged. And, and, and this conversation is really not necessarily about being engaged with the school district, which is, I think, important. We have social media. Yeah. But I really see an opportunity for them, to, parents, to engage with their, with their children yes. and use the social media as a platform to become more engaged with your child. If it means sitting down with them to learn about the various types them. of social media. So what would you share? that this conversation has probably motivated you to do once you leave here today that may be of help to another parent. Well, first, let me confess and say I will never again text her from the same house. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, a big, this has been very helpful. In many, many ways, it's been confirmation that I'm doing the right thing. Good. It's nice to hear uh, the other perspectives. So it's been very helpful, particularly from the parent side. And then it's opened my mind a bit more to at least give the, an opportunity for me to go to the social media sites by the district and yeah. engage. Yeah. So. Wow. And start the engagement I will there. try. Yeah. I will Very try. Good. Very good. Hey, we, we've accomplished something. Yes, <laughs> well, I will definitely um, go to the district website and um, view them from now on and um, maybe join Instagram. You guys have motivated me a little bit to be a little more lenient towards my daughter. <laughs> She's and saying maybe, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And maybe um, me and her will both um, explore Facebook and Instagram and maybe kick with her and just lay down some rules before I allow her to do it as well as tell her that I need the password. Very good. <laughs> Empower her. Yes. Uh, and I guess um, as it relates to you and the educational platform, we got to have some classes for us. That's right. Yeah. We have to have some measures of teaching us to step into this new millennium and be a part of this social network and see the advantages as opposed to the disadvantages. Yeah. Because the tendency as a parent is, oh no, you ain't ready for that because I'm not ready for you to be there. You know? Mm. Mm. you know, I think we've almost accomplished the mission of engagement now because parents are saying that they too are being transformed. That's right, that's right. And they're engaging with, I think, the most important people in their lives. That's right. That would be their children. Their children. Mm -hmm. And we've accomplished something that's today. Right, well, it's been a great conversation. Thank you, Thank yes. you to all Thank for you participating. All. And we just want to encourage our parents out there, engage with your children, engage with the school district, engage with one another. Stay engaged and do it now. Every day is a precious day. Thank you all. It's been a great Thanks conversation. Thanks so much for joining us. Okay.